This is ridiculous. Pure, beautiful chaos. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome to a, a fall round two episode. So I know that everybody else had already, has already gotten their fall and it's already gone, but it is, what day is today, Brittany? Um, I think it's Monday. The 23rd? It's like the last week of October. 23. Yeah. 23. <laughs> Yay. It's like the last week of October and um, the Gila is finally like peaking right now. So Southwest New Mexico, we're just a couple miles from my house and I'm very excited after having been in Northern New Mexico last couple weeks. This is, oh, it's wonderful, but it's still like, don't let this fool you. It's still like 80 degrees out right now. All right, so what are we doing here today? Um, I just figured we would come out. We're gonna do some camping, maybe not tonight, but soon for another episode. So we're kind of scouting. Uh, but I figured this would be a great location, great time to talk about this Frankenstein monster of a tripod. <laughs> so this is from Hypey, Hypey, Hypey. They sent this to me a while ago, like a couple months ago, and I've been a horrible YouTuber and I've, I've been using it, but I haven't been able to do a review of it. So I'm finally ready to do that. And I think this thing is very interesting. So first off, right off the bat, this is not sponsored other than they sent it to me. I'm not being paid or anything like that and they don't get to see the review. So everything that I'm saying is mine. Oh, now it's getting cloudy again, Brittany. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so the light might be pretty wonky because the sun is coming in and out, but you know what, we're gonna roll with it. So this thing is a travel tripod it's marketed as a travel tripod and the first thing i just wanted is that a bug no the first thing i just wanted to take a look at is i want to show you guys size wise like it's kind of hard to gauge travel tripods are all over the place so i have a, a bunch of other travel tripods things that are marketed as such so let me get these out and then i'll show you all right, so on my never ending search for the perfect travel tripod, these are some of the ones that I have amassed. And as you can see, like all of these are labeled travel tripods. So this one is the oldest. This is, we'll just go ahead and get this out of here because you can't get this thing anymore. This is a Velbin. Oh my gosh, I can almost read it. It's a Velbin something. Yeah. <laughs> it's very old. And this thing is probably the most trusty, sturdy tripod ever built. But that's the biggest. Uh, the next largest we have is my Colorado tripod, which is an amazing tripod, and it's just so unfortunate what happened to the company. And what happened to the company is I have no idea, but I just know that you can't get these anymore. So that's unfortunate. This thing is marketed as a travel tripod. It's probably, up until now, this has definitely been the most sturdy. You can, you can definitely see like the leg size difference and all of that. This thing is beefy. It's like over four pounds. Um, and it's got with with this ginormous Aspen ball head. So this thing is is technically a travel tripod and I have traveled internationally with this, uh, but it's not super fun. So then we get down to um, one of my most recent favorite tri tripods and that's the Sure. This thing has been amazing. It's close to the Colorado tripod in, in size and thickness here but it's lighter. So this is like three and a half pounds or something like that. But then we get into the super small guys. So now you can see, let's just, we'll put these three like this because these three are the ones that I would consider or that I travel with the most now. So right off the bat, you can see just how much smaller these two are. And I would say that this Hypey is definitely in the same vein, same style as the Peak Design, which I don't have because I don't like it. Um, and this Ulanzi one that I have. But size-wise, this thing is right in the middle. I think it's just around three pounds. Size-wise with the ball head, you can see it definitely sticks up a little bit more, although the leg height is pretty similar. All right, so let's talk about a few things that I love and some things that are maybe questionable. I don't know, there's actually not that really, there's really not that much uh, negative about it. So first of all, we've got this new 
ball head uh, attachy bit here. And I really love that it's got this bit here that you can just tweak a little bit and that like moves this little thing. It makes it super amazing and super easy for any Arca Swiss. And I have my, my peak design for my capture clips, you know, that I, I clip into my bags and stuff. Everything I have has the peak design uh, Arca Swiss plate on it. And just being able to set it on here real quick and then it kind of like auto locks, but then you just can turn it and it's like, it's pretty solid. So, you know, I really, I think that's, diff that's different than anything that I've seen. So that's the little design clippy bit. Uh, I really like that. So we'll just move down feature by feature here. The next thing is this ball head. And this ball head is very interesting. This, I would say, is what separates it from, this is probably the biggest thing, literally, that separates it from most travel tripods. And even though this thing is like um, pretty compact, especially with the diameter and that sort of thing, the ball head is really large for a travel tripod and it's quite heavy so it's it's standard in every way you know it's got the three eighths here um, it's got the the panning lever here it's got the the ball articulation thingy here it's just a standard ball head but it's a little more compact than a than a typical ball head it's beefy this thing can handle my r5 with a 2470 my 7200 no problem. Uh, this thing can also even handle my 500 F4, although only at about 10 degrees plus or minus level. So this ball head overall is amazing. And to me, it really puts it above the rest for, especially for anything that's this size and weight, it puts it above the rest because the ball head is so strong and I'm just really happy with that. Okay, so let's talk about the next thing about why this thing is a Frankenstein, well, Technically, it would be Frankenstein's monster. Hype would be Dr. Frankenstein, I suppose. So it's got this lever here. You can, uh, this ring that we can unscrew. And then we can then slide this up and we can lock this down. So once we do that, now we have a super solid extended center column and i know a lot of people don't like center columns so you can take this off completely you can take it out uh, or you can leave it on and just keep it down whatever you want but there's a couple reasons why they did this obviously this gives you more stability than just a single center column so it spreads the weight out so it spreads the weight out and you can then extend this a little bit higher and be a little more comfortable about it so the second thing if, if you haven't seen where this is going yet <laughs> then here it is. This is the second thing. So you can you can pull that out completely. You just gotta watch out for that. So this little clippy bit comes off and then you can uh, put it back on there. Or you can take it off completely and you can just, we can switch the ball heads. So we can take the center column out completely So now we've got a lighter, smaller tripod. I would say more compact, but the way that they did this little guy, it, it's not really any more compact. It's still the same, but it is a little bit lighter. And it, it's definitely still top heavy because of the ball head. You can't change that weight. So you've got that. And then, I mean, look at this. I mean, when this breaks down, I mean, this is like, you know, that that's ridiculous. That That's pretty impressive. So if you needed to even put that inside of a bag or whatever, like it's not gonna take out too much room. This is, this is the Frankenstein part. This is like the Power Ranger part, the Voltron part, whatever you wanna call it. <laughs> this is the with our powers combined part. It makes a nice little mini tripod. And then if you didn't take the, the ball head off, So there it is. So now we have a little mini tripod, a tabletop tripod, or in my case, um, for wildlife, putting this on my 500 F4 and then getting really low. The cool thing too about this is it's got these little clippy bits right here. So we can extend, so we can extend each leg. And now it's even flatter. So now it's, you know, only four inches off the ground or something like that. 
and that can get if you need to get really low even just with whatever you know this is fantastic there's you know nothing under here flat on the ground if the ground is uneven you can have one of these you know you can mess with it a little bit so that's a two in one and then if you take an extra ball head just to you know whatever extra ball head then you could just have two tripods and they you know they would take up less space than two actual tripods would so that's kind of cool obviously this one will be a, a little short tripod but you know i'm just throwing it out there so i just think that this is like a really cool design what you can't forget to do though is you can't forget to to put this guy uh, back here so that you can slide these in and then once it's in we can just tighten this back down and there we are so the way that they did these legs to fit uh, in between is just genius and the way that it opens up like the fact that it comes the fact that it comes through uh, these smaller tripod legs and then kind of clicks nests in there real nice so let's talk about the clampy bits and the legs this is probably my least favorite part of the tripod and that's not to say that i hate it at all it's just it takes you know i'm used to the twisty bits uh, these are like locking bits so i mean they come out pretty easily but when you push them, you got to make sure they click because if they don't click, they're kind of springy and, you know, they might, they, they won't stay down unless you hear that click. But once you do hear that click, like these, these legs are, are solid, you know, they're not, they're not going anywhere. And when this is, when this is out, like it can handle a pretty decent load, but then bringing them back in, you just, you got to be careful again, like. When you push these all down like this, it doesn't just go, f like for me, it just doesn't, I have pretty big hands too. Like I can wrap around the whole thing, but you've got to make sure that they're like lined up and, and clicked in. So that's the only thing about the legs is they're fine. It's totally fine. It's, it would never be a deal breaker for me at all. It's just, it just takes a little getting used to, but you can, you can uh, pop them all out. It does kind of, it does kind of get you on the fingers if you try to do it all in one like that. I also really like the panning knob. It has these little clicks and I think that that's to denote uh, every 10 degrees. That's what it seems to be. So it has the degrees label all around. So if you want to do your panos and be really precise with it. And then the ball head just easily goes over here for vertical. And what I like about this too is there's, there's enough top heaviness here I haven't ever felt worried about like for one if i'm locking this in and i'm pointing this thing up or down or whatever like either that or towards a, a waterfall or up towards the sky or whatever which i've done quite a bit of astro with this so far i don't i don't i certainly don't worry about the integrity of this shifting on me uh, during a time lapse or a long exposure or anything like that because this ball head this even though this lever looks a little dainty uh it's the the tightness and the friction on the ball head is is quite strong and the the locky bit here on the arca swiss there's no way that it can rotate on like on some other ones so i really i really have a lot of i really have a lot of trust in this thing holding where i tell it to hold and then locking the pan and tilt down as always when you push things to the side you got to watch your uh, you got to watch your center of gravity because it is shifted. But even with that, as long as you level the tripod legs decently, I haven't had any issue shooting in vertical position like this. And I've been very, very happy with that. All right. So the last thing I'll mention, I think is just the build quality is outstanding. This thing feels like you could whack a mugger with it if you needed to, <laughs> you know, this thing feels like you could defend yourself with it. It feels like you could drop it down a mountain. I've had mine for a couple months. I've already kind of beat it up. I've scuffed it and scratched it and stuff. And, and uh, it just, it feels as solid as ever. The one thing that I will say though, is, I'm, I, oh, and it does have a, a little level right there, a little uh, tripod levely thing. And then it has another one on the ball head. But this guy right here, I'm a little concerned about this because 
there's like these little plastic, there's this slidey ring, you can see those sliding. And there's this little plastic ringy thing inside there and these, these little tabs, they stick out a little bit. I'm a little concerned knowing how I am <laughs> that I might accidentally break those or something. I, I would hope, and I don't know, but I would hope that probably uh, Hype would offer replacements for these like if you could buy them online or something like this little this whole ring thing because i don't think i can pull this ring thing out without breaking it oh that's cool you know what i just noticed right here if you you have to line it up just perfectly but right here uh there are quarter 20s on the sides of each one of these on the the little tabletop tripod and those are for if you want to mount an extension arm or a hot shoe, I mean a cold shoe mount or something like that uh, to hold your lights or microphones or any kind of extensions. That's really smart and that's really handy. All right. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. I, I don't really know what else. If you guys have any questions about this thing, let me know. I've, like I said, I've been using it for a couple of months now. And I really honestly think that this is going to be my main travel tripod moving forward if I can only take one tripod and I don't know what I'm gonna be doing, where I'm gonna be at, this is easily small enough to pack on the side of my bag and go travel internationally. The ability to have potentially two tripods in one if I really need it, it is just a little bit bigger and heavier than my Ulanzi, but the fact that it's smaller than every other tripod that I have I think this is like the perfect size weight combination and the fact that it can handle you know, all of these setups with, I mean, this 2470 is a really front heavy lens. So the fact that it can handle this in, in any angle that I've put it in so far, and the fact that it can even handle my 500 F4 uh, to, you know, normal, not stupid degrees, <laughs> that's impressive. I've been really happy with this thing and it's definitely gonna stay in my kit moving forward. I'm going to be taking it to Scotland. I'm going to be taking it all over the place. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, links down below for their stuff uh, if you want to check it out. And if you have any questions about anything that I went over or didn't go over concerning the tripod, let me know in the comments down below and I will definitely answer them. Hit that like button if you made it this far. I really appreciate it. It's the best thing you can do for the channel. If you're into it, you can also check out the channel memberships if you want to get a little extra behind the scenes content, uh, extra videos, tutorials all of that stuff, a little more access to me. You can check out the channel memberships. Those go a long way for just a couple bucks a month to help further support me and Camera Lady, and we really appreciate that. All right, well, now that the sun's down and I can actually see, <laughs> I'm gonna go walk around here and see if I can get a few images. If I get anything for this scouting mission, I'll throw them in here. But I think the next vlog, we're gonna come back here in a couple of days, and I think that'll be my next video, and we're just gonna do, I'm just gonna try to make some sense out of this chaos. <laughs> because it is beautiful, but man, I am going to struggle. So stick around for that. I think that'll be next. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.